Um, this is gonna have to be obligatory. Bahumat. All right, that's enough of that. That's good music. Pretend this never happened. This never happened. All right, here we go. Bahuma round two. The revenging. So no messing about this time. We're gonna hellfire straight away. I didn't hellfire Valifor this time. I just grinded out and killed him normally. So I've still got my grand summon available. Uh, so yeah, one hellfire. Almost, well, basically 10,000 damage. He looks fine. He's not even phased. We, he should have a bunch of countdowns here. But, ah, uh, see, that's fine. He only had two. I don't understand how he got that extra go when we dismissed him before. Look, now he's in his weak stance already. Pathetic. Come on. Get up. Show me some fight. Show, countdown two. Um, one attack then. Then it should say countdown one is overdrive or charge. Then we defend. Okay, and let Ifrit take the damage. Of which he might even survive. This is Mega Flare, by the way. This is the, his overdrive. I guess that was a pretty cool way of introducing it to you guys. It is a cool attack. There's one uh, interesting thing about uh, Behuma. You know how um, I'm capped at the amount of damage I can do at 9,999? I won't go any higher than that. Unless you get something called Break Damage Limit. Which I'll talk to you guys more about later. But uh, there are special ways to break the damage limit for all the different Aeons. But Behuma, by default comes with it already unlocked so his overdrive can already do more damage than anyone else's um just because he's got break damage limit and no one else has got it it's pretty cool right uh but what we'll do now is we'll dismiss ifrit countdown of five and do you know what i want to do i want to go classic style when we kill him i want to um classic well no let's uh let's double let's double overdrive him with ixion I know it's been a while since we scored any kills with Valifor, but don't worry, late game, there are a lot of enemies that Valifor will I'll be showing her off again, because she just completely eliminates what enemies can do. So, Ixion's currently got the double overdrive deal going on, so she can Thor's hammer twice, or he can Thor's hammer twice, if Behemoth survives. No, but there you go, that's an overkill. Uh, and my Pokemon are stronger than yours, basically. I just... This was the equivalent of getting rid of them before a massive attack. Oh, so bad. And that's the uh, last one go down. His name was Spathy, by the way, in the original version. And uh, now, I, I don't know what his name is now. <sighs> Something much more basic. Stay away. Sorry, Asari. Yuna, let's go. There's a way to the surface up ahead. You picked the wrong team, bro. Oron staying behind? Your pilgrimage is over. Wow. I feel like he's been waiting to say that ever since Isaru challenged us back at Jose. A race to beat Sin. And that's how his pilgrimage ends. But Donna's is pretty much ended too, right? So that whole idea of a race is looking a lot more bleak now. But yeah, so uh, all of our walking guys are out of the uh, dungeon now, supposedly. What about the swimmers? What's been going on? Hey, guys! So, uh, here you'll find a save sphere. Absolutely grab it. We get another part of the labyrinth. Again, contracted gameplay. I feel like this bit should be a bit longer. But uh, it's it's not, frankly. Now, there's two cool things here. Number one is that save sphere. Number two is this chest that is actually a merchant. Would you believe it? Yeah. I guess they have to do it because you might not have any healers around with you right now. We don't need anything from it, though, at all. Uh, not even these distillers or whatever, which are only added in the international version. We can ignore those and swim forward. You do get random encounters here. Many of the same fiends as we saw before. Obviously, uh, Sahagans can swim. There may be some newbies as well that you get to see. Like these guys. Look at those are more dangerous Sahagans you can see there. Uh, we've already done plenty of stealing. So let's just throw... Well, that's a lightning marble. Do we have a stronger one? Uh, I guess not. All right, that's fine. So I guess we'll throw... Uh, Shadow Gems reduce, reduce all HP of all enemies by half. It's even stronger than Demi. Those are the things we were stealing from the worms. Smoke Bomb, as always. Lots of targets here. You know, uh, the game gives you more than three targets quite often. That's a double overkill and uh, darkness on certain enemies. Delay attack this guy so he doesn't get a go. Like so. Uh, unequip um, anything you've currently got on. Get back your lightning stuff. I told you guys it's useful the whole way through the game. Uh, I guess we'll throw another one, right? These were what we were stealing from the birds in the desert. 
from even the big ones too. Uh, whack is attack reels. Should we go with an element reels here? Still can't blitz, so I can't really apologize for the thingy. All right, here we go. So it's after red. Ah, damn it. We got water. That's the worst possible. Let's go with double yellow at least. Now, it's not going to be AoE, but at least it'll be lightning. And it'll hit one of them for pretty hard. Nice. <laughs> Nearly 5k. Man, that's awesome. But his second overdrive is better. We'll mug this guy. Dragon scale. Sounds more impressive than it is. It's just a water item. Uh, Titus, you need to get your lightning thing on. Lightning strike, lightning still. And overall, it's looking pretty easy for these guys, right? Riku gets another go because she's stupidly quick. Whacker pounds him in the face and he dies. So that's most of the enemies you'll find here. Just looking at my guide right now. There's really nothing else amazing, so don't worry. Uh, let's swim on forward. And it looks like we're in basically the sewer systems. I'm led to believe that these are reused assets from very early dev uh, versions of the game where you were going to be a plumber in Xanakind with like the black hair and stuff. But um, maybe that's not true. Uh, the, that safe sphere there looks weird as well. It doesn't have like a bottom to it. Here's another new type of enemy there, that golden one in the middle. Um, he is a field gas. It releases sonic wave after it's been pulsing for three times. Uh, so I think it does it as like a counter. So there you go, it charges every time. So you want to hit it with big stuff or no stuff at all. We'll maintain the delay attacks. Wack could go for another hit here. He's doing really well on uh, that assassination or that killer overdrive mode. Dodge there, that's fine. Mug this guy. Riku's also very lucky, so you'll find she scores a lot of critical hits. And uh, I guess this guy's fine. There you go, it's dead. Overkilled, nice. Another dragon scale, another delay attack. I'm showing these cut these uh, battles uh, only because there won't be too many of them. This is really a very short area. Showing these guys journey out of the uh, the waters. So we'll save here at this very weird looking safe sphere. I guess it's just because it's not grounded on anything. You know, it's literally just floating there in the water. It's like these are the only two in the game that you find in water. Is that true? I feel like that's true. Bit of trivia there. Alright, so we'll swim into this giant chamber that looks like it should have a boss in it, but obviously isn't going to have a boss in it. I mean, why would it have a boss here? There wasn't a boss in the other one. Ah, I know a lot of Pyrefires are gathering, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a big fiend in the area, does it? No, of course it doesn't. Oh dear. What is this? It's Evray! Except he's looking a little different. Evray is back. Check this thing out. This is Evray Atlanta. Uh, now, you will notice he has a status effect called Zombie on him. This is something in Fun Fantasy that means when you're zombied, uh, all the healing stuff in the game starts hurting you. So you can use that to your advantage and basically instantly kill this boss. I'm not going to do that. I think it's cheesy. I, uh, I'm going to show you guys some of the cool stuff you can do in the battle first. So, first we'll mug from him. You get a healing spring, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's actually the rare heal as well, which is pretty awesome. So, you'll notice everybody has a trigger command available called Open Lock. Now, remember when we were on the airship, he would charge in for that poison breath and you were meant to pull the airship away? Same thing here, if he starts breathing in, you can swim away with Open Lock. But, by doing this, you lose out on loot in the main area. So, you want to ideally be able to kill this guy completely out in the open. Now, uh, can we still slow him is something I'm very curious about. Or is he now immune? No, you can still slow him, that's great. Wack has got his overdrive up, so we'll attack reels him. He's not weak to lightning, even though he's underwater. Uh, I guess the story here, by the way, is when he died, he fell in the water and just somehow ended up in the sewers, or the pyreflies that made up him just have just recombined. I think it's a cool fight. It's it's like a it's more of a mini boss than the original whatever he was. Tons of damage from Wacker there, that's awesome. Uh, he always counters with physical attacks. I don't know if I already explained that. And even though he looks like he's got darkness on him, he doesn't. So that's Stone Gaze, you'll notice. And Wacker just petrified. If you get petrified underwater, then that's it. You break as well instantly. That's really bad. Break was a mechanic in the first every fight I never got to show you. He would petrify you and then use this ability called Scythe that had break. So what can we do to bring Wacker back? Well, we can swim through this gate. So let's give it a shot. Actually, how much health has he got left? We can't tell because Wacker just got petrified. So funny enough, if you open a lock like this, 
Um, oh, I think you actually have to unlock multiple gates and then you, multiple locks, and then it lets you go through because there's two locks. So now the gate should open, and do we also have to swim through? It's very rare, may I say, for me to actually do this fight normally. Usually, I would absolutely just uh, kill him through zombies. So basically, because he's a zombie, what happens if you throw like a phoenix down at him? Well, that will instantly kill him. I think you need to throw like two phoenix downs. It does max damage in the game, and, it, and I'll demo that in a second. Um, but yeah, so we swam past that chest. We're not going to be able to get that back now. So we, uh, you know, that's that's the gamble you you play with if you do this. So really, you might want to just open one lock, then wait and open the second one. Here we're going to use because I don't care about using stuff up right now. We're going to use a chocobo feather to haste. Oh man, I mean, uh, if we haste Wacker, at least he gets a go. And he's come back, you'll see. So that's the main reason that you might want to do that. They will come back into the into the fray. White magic, we will haste. Whack, uh, hold on, Titus here. He's still been slowed. So as long as he doesn't stone breath here, we'll be okay. But the whole point is it takes a long time to get through those things. I don't think he can hit him with many of these statuses. We'll try. Yeah, he's still immune to them. Oh, there you go. He only needed one more hit before he died. So not a particularly difficult fight, as you can see. Um, and down he goes. I'll show you the alternative right now. Alright, so here we go. Every Atlanta round two. What we will do is we will throw a Phoenix down at the boss, who is zombified, so healing effects will be reversed. Boom, 8,192 damage. He counters with the physical attack, as he always does. That's fine. Let's throw another Phoenix down at the boss. And we overkill him, which is better than what I did just now. Nobody died. We didn't have to miss any chests. And there you go. So it's really not meant to be a massive, massive fight. It's a bit of a shock fight. Even if you don't know about the zombie thing, I think he's pretty easy to take care of, especially if you manage to get through the regular every, obviously, encounter. And, and in the regular one, you, you there was no way you were relying on summons or anything like that anyway. Uh, and there you go. That's every Atlanta dealt with. You do have less options here, but so does he. Plenty of AP. Two more black magic spheres, so we're more than set with that. And a soft shield. I don't know if he drops anything else amazing. The only thing I'm missing there is I never picked up a healing spring. But I'm not too uh, worried about that. Anyway, so now you're in these vast areas, these big empty areas. No encounters will plague you here at all. Again, seems weird to me. I feel like there should be encounters here. Break up the pace of it a bit. I mean, as much as you can end up hating random encounters, especially if you're super into the plot, you know, just that screen shattering makes your eye twitch a little. It, this just seems weird, you know? Why are they giving a... I mean, the reason why we've got so far to swim here is because we did the encounter so well, but it just seems like an oversight. Anyway, two things we got there. The rematch for um, um, Wacker, which is evade encounter on a weapon, nothing else. And then we also got for... Um, uh, Titus the Avenger, which is counterattack again. So that's our third one. Would you believe it? Don't worry though, they sell for a fair amount of money. Uh, and you know, you may look at that and be like, oh, why, why should I ever buy one from a walker if I'm going to get two from the story? You, you're going to do it because you get it earlier, you know, and it's useful on the way up there, especially if you're using provoke. And you're going to do it because there's not much else to spend gil on in the game anyway. You know, embrace the mechanics. Spend it while you can. It's, uh, I, there's something about playing games very conservatively that I think, uh, I was stuck in for a long time, but if you if you shake yourself out of that mindset, you can, uh, I think, you can enjoy them a lot more. It's a lot more fun if you find something that you want to buy, but you don't have the money for it, and then you go away and, like, there's a goal, something you go to do, rather than just, yo, oh, i got to play super conservatively all the time, I don't want to use this stuff. You know, this is coming from me, I've barely used any items in this LP when I should have, and I've barely used anything with Riku. I've been stealing, mostly. Or just physically attacking, which is pretty bad. Anyway, that's it. That's the under the underwater section of the Via Infi uh, Via Purifico, for God's sake, not the Infinito. Infinitos later. Damn it. What the hell's gonna happen? We were left to die, but we escaped. Uni, you're all right. We were so worried. It's good to have you back. I love the look of the city in the background there. <sighs> Thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, oh snap, it's Seymour.
Well, he wasn't the nicest guy. Keenock. Why you? I have saved him. <laughs> he was a man who craved power. And great power he had, but he feared losing it. Trembling at unseen enemies, he spent his days scheming petty schemes. Chased by his fears, never knowing rest. You see, now he has no worries. He has been granted sleep eternal. Death is a sweet slumber. All the pain of life is gently swept away. Ah, yes. So you see, if all life were to end in Spira, all suffering would end. Don't you see? Do you not agree? That, Yuna, is why I need you. Come, Lady Yuna. Come with me to Xanarkand, the lost city of the dead. With death on our side, we will save Spira. And for this, I will take from you your strength, Yuna, your life, and become the next Sin. I will destroy Spira. I will save it. You're totally nuts! Oh! <laughs> That's pretty graphic for this game. Unpleasant. Very well. I will give you your death. You seem to want it so. Kamari, what are you doing? Get out of Dodge Bro! He literally just obli sent all of these people and absorbs their power. This is where it gets like crazy anime Japanese. I mean, it's gonna have to at some point, right? Wow. Run! Protect Yuna! Oh. Go! He's gonna 1v1 no it! Way. I'm fighting! I said go! Remember your duty! Go, Titus! That, my friends, by the way, is Seymour Natus. This isn't even my final form! And we leg it, leaving ah! Kamari behind. He's a guardian. Protecting you is everything. Oren! This is it! This is his moment! That's right! We're all guardians! Yeah, and you know what that means? Yuna, anywhere you go, I'll follow. Anywhere I go? Yeah, anywhere. Well then, let's, let's go. go! Oh, hey, come on! Leave some for us! Hey, wait for me! Me too! I'll go too. <laughs> uh, oh, I love that he laughs along as well. Now, my friends, it's a rescue mission. Alright, okay, so what have we got on the table here? Um, we've got a long walk back to Kamari. Kamari is no longer in our team, as you can see here. On the sphere grid, I've just moved everyone around. Yuna has just learned a new ability with a bunch of new sphere levels. It's this ability here uh, called... Uh, wait, 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 no, 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 not, not protect. She had that ages ago. What did she just learn? Ah, it's over here. No, that's protect. She already had protect. This one here, sorry. So she's just learned reflect. Reflect is an awesome ability that reflects spells cast on you and is particularly useful very soon. Um, and she'll get to spell soon too, which is uh, a spell I talked about a while ago. I'm not going to bother with that too much though, and let's start walking. And hey, check it out, he's a walker. You're quite popular these days, eh? Where have you been, dude? Anything you want, I've got it. Hey, how's it going? I love it. All right, what do you have? So this guy serves as an item vendor for you, sorely needed. Trader or not. Lady Yoon has always been a friend to a walker. 
Oh, that's very nice of you. And that's all he really has to say. Where we are right now is, um, after, first of all, we can't walk down the bridge. You won't believe how close we are to Makalani or Woods we are right now. You may remember earlier in the LP, I told you guys that there was a way to prevail from there. But uh, yeah, where we are is a fantastic place to train. The uh, enemies you will encounter here are amazing for AP. Way better than most future areas in the plot. Like, really, really good. So here, we're going to start attacking this guy because he can thrust kick and whatever. Um, I, what's he weak to? He's weak to fire and water. Well, those are weak to fire and water. They all are. So maybe, do we have any water weapons? We do, obviously, the Brotherhood. So we'll equip that. And uh, Wacky here has obviously got attack reels. Also, you'll find many warrior monks here who you can fight, which again give you the like double overdrive charging, which is great if you want to have a bunch of overdrive charged for when you get to the end of the bridge. And, you know, a potential tussle here with... Uh, crazy looking Seymour back there. So uh, we'll surely be spamming a lot of overdrives. I won't be showing you, too, you guys too many of these fights. Let's move in a bit closer. This is also another opportunity obviously for you to get another, uh, um, to get thrust kick for Kamari if you didn't already. So there you go, we'll deal with that. And that's a lot of AP we already got. I'm not interested in grinding my guys up. The other thing with, like a lot of people can suggest, if you grind here, like, you literally just spend a couple of hours here, you're set for the rest of the game, honestly. You can get so strong so early, it's bizarre. Um, but the one character who doesn't is Kamari, and I feel like this is one of the big reasons. Oh, uh, Tidus just learned a new ability called Delay Buster as well. Um, so the Buster version of Delay Attack is just a much stronger version. There's no, unlike the other Busters where there's like a trade-off, here it's just better to use Delay buff Buster. It's better. Take a number, buddy. Uh, that's what Titus says there. So yeah, you may as well just use it whenever you possibly can. So that's that dealt with. Uh, Wacker doesn't need his lightning weapon anymore. Has he got a better one? Yeah, this scout with strength on it. There's the evade encounter thing too, but we won't worry about that. We could have sold that to it. No, we can't even sell it to a Wacker, I don't think, because he's just an item vendor right now. Um, oh, no, no, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. We'll mug him. Uh, you'll see Auron's got a new ability there, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is... Um, a big drawback for Kamari. A lot of people feel like he's kind of pointless. He doesn't have his own sphere path. He's usually following behind other people. I feel like in this series we've managed to make him pretty strong. He's been outperforming Lulu at least. Um, wow, okay, so Wacker died there. I wasn't expecting that. Should we go with a good old Dragon Fang? Damages all enemies. There we go. Still useful for different things. Double overkill there. Easy. I wonder if you can still get the Mega Phoenixes from these guys here. I guess you probably can. If you can, that would be another great reason to farm it up. Yeah, it looks like you can. Rare drops on those. That would be amazing. So yeah, he doesn't get his own path. Uh, and he's not, you know, he's not been the most distinct character in our party this whole time. So, you know, you you uh, you just sort of leave him to the wolves by training up here. And everyone's like super overpowered except Kamari because he's not with you. So that sucks. Let's uh, listen to our own advice and always overdrive whenever we can with Titus. I'm hoping for a battle here in a moment with a friggin' um, there you go, that thing should die, charge whackers overdrive. I'm hoping for a battle with a bunch more of the uh, uh, warrior monks so that we can get our double, because like that's double AP as well, it's not just double overdrive modes, but it's double AP. So an overkill would be quadruple, now, one of the reasons why you get so much. Delay buster, he'll die anyway. And sp if spending a lot of time here can just level you up but also get you a bunch of mega phoenixes. Those, there you go, there's a Mega Phoenix we've got there. Those Mega Phoenixes can be used to customize on um, Auto Phoenix onto player armor. And again, that's just going to trivialize a lot of the stuff in the game. But it doesn't matter, let's keep pressing up. I like the water on the side of this bridge. So don't forget, Vavel is built on the water now. You may have already grasped this fact already. Uh, you don't, from what we've seen of Vavel, that's all you see of Vavel. You don't really get to see the city like areas in this game. You don't really get to see. Um, the general, it doesn't feel at all like Luca. We just see like the council chambers uh, and you know, part of the underground of Bavel. Uh, it isn't until the sequel that you truly get to experience the city itself. And so the high bridge and the things you see in the distance on the high bridge are really mostly all you're going to get. Uh, the HD remake does give you a little bit more of a view, more of a, a bit more of a window, but not too much. Alright, those, those mortars are really deadly. It's weird how if you delay Buster, their death animation doesn't start until they've been knocked back. Um, but yeah, okay. 
I don't care about MP because there's another safe sphere coming up just very close. So we'll just spam attacks however we like. In fact, it's right there. Save your game before going off to save Kimari. <laughs> and in we go. Oh, look at that grin on his face. He's shaking his head, but he loves it. We're not leaving you behind, bro. Here we go. So this is another battle with Seymour. This is Seymour Natus. The help tells us that he casts elemental magic such as Break and Flare. He has 36,000 health, and he also has another target with him called the Mortar Body, uh, which just says watch out for their combo attacks. Just like before, Seymour is a powerful mage, much more powerful now than ever before we've seen him. Um, and with this Mortar Body too, a simple cast of, say, Null Shock or whatever isn't going to be enough. There's a lot of multiple hits of lightning we're going to get struck with. First, uh, or magic, sorry. So first, we're going to um, just use our trigger commands. Talk is once again available. Let's see what happens by talking to Seymour. It is good to see you again, Lady Yuna, but you don't seem pleased. I'll only be pleased when you're gone to the far plane. It's weird that she can't just send him now, but there you go. Magic defense increases. Sorely, sorely desired. Here's Titus, who talks as well. So, you too seek freedom from this painful life? You talk too much, Seymour. It's funny, because we really have no relationship with this guy at all. Uh, you can see why a lot of people say Titus isn't really the main character of FFX. If he's, like, the great antagonist, uh, you know, we really don't care for him that much. So here we go. Now the enemies are getting a turn. Tier 1 Black Magic coming from the Mortar Body. It will hit everyone, so that would break your Null Frost, for example. Now Seymour comes in with a double cast, and that's Blizzara. And as you can see, that's devastated unit, even though she had her, uh, what's he, uh, boosted, her magic defense boosted. So we're going to be in for some trouble if we keep pissing about like this. Now, you've got multiple ways of killing Seymour. There is a very cheaty way of doing it, um, and that is through poison. Now, Seymour changes his attack patterns the lower on health he gets. He gets more deadly the closer he is to dying. Um, and so the way that the game decides how he's going to change attack patterns is if you physically attack him or you attack, do damage to him in, in any way, after you do the damage, the game assesses what his health is at and then it decides, oh, okay, I'm going to change attack pattern. The thing is, Seymour is vulnerable to Bio. Bio inflicts poison on an enemy. Now, Bio, whenever he takes damage from poison, the game forgets to check his health and change his attack pattern. So, if you poison him and then just focus purely on defending against these magic attacks, you know, I get in my tankiest guys now, you'll actually find that you can kill Seymour very easily. It will take a while because you're not doing any other damage, just a thousand every turn, but you will actually kill Seymour um, just through the poison alone. And this is something a lot of people recommend because it's not an easy boss fight. You see, we get one turn with Kamari here and Yuna's dead and it's just not looking good. Um, so what I want to do is um, bring Wacker in because he's pretty tanky and he has attack reels up. And we're going to go with an attack reels and see what happens if we can kill that mortar body. The mortar body only has 4,000 health or something like that. So we'll go with a perfect attack reels there. And this should kill the mortar body. And I can show you guys what happens there. It says watch out for their combo attacks. Well, let's see what happens if we kill it. So they can't combo. Come on. Ah, we didn't hit enough, it doesn't look like. Maybe he's got 10k health? No, he does, he does. So that killed it. But he's just regened himself back up to life. Now, he did that at a cost to Seymour's life. Which does mean we did 4,000 damage to Seymour on top of the attack reels there, which was a lot of damage, but we never managed to get rid of, you know, the, the actual enemy. So it will always stay there. If you kill it a second time, it will absorb 3,000 health from uh, Seymour. If you kill it a third, it will absorb 2,000 and then 1,000 a pop. So you could keep focusing on the mortar body, or you can ignore it completely and go for Seymour Natter since you'll never be able to kill it. So uh, we have two people dead here. Uh, what I'm going to do is throw one of our Mega Phoenixes. It's the first one we've seen this be used in the LP. Because we need to stabilize here. Here's a multi fearer Hopefully people don't die instantly. Good. That one hit Wacker. We want the next to hit Lulu because she'll survive this. Good, good, good. 
And then, right, so now we've got a little bit more leeway. Now we're going to bring Riku in. Again, Riku should be mixing. What am I doing? I've, I think I've recorded too many episodes today without giving myself time to, like, grind between. Well, not grind, you know what I mean. A shadow gem, reduce all enemies by half. Do you guys really think that's going to work on this boss? The answer is no, it's not, so don't even bother. Uh, but we can start throwing around Luna Curtains. Um, and I'm going to throw one on Riku here, just to be sure that she doesn't die. She's quick, so... Um, she's gonna count, you know, this immense speed we've got here. Just until we can start. There you go, only 140 damage. There we go. Now Yuna's got it getting a go. I'm gonna swap her out for Tidus. Now this may look dangerous, but it's not. And I'm gonna haste Tidus. We really need to start getting some speed going. And I know we've got two low people. But Riku's gonna get a go, so I'm gonna have her throw an Albed Potion, which will heal us all up uniformly. Maybe not to max, but quite a lot. And it doesn't matter that she's shelled either. So there we go. Now we've got a multi Blizzara coming. Not going to hit uh, Riku very hard. Or Lulu. She's fine too. Sweet. So now Tidus can go ahead and haste Riku. She'll get even more turns. Lulu I'm going to swap out for a second. And throw in Auron. Now, Seymour Natus is... Uh, before he used to be vulnerable to magic break... Uh, I don't believe he is anymore, but we do have a new break. This is called Mental Break. Now, Mental Break means he'll take more damage from our magic. So I'm going to try it because I feel like at some point when I was playing this game... No, uh, he's immune. But you notice we did a lot of damage there. He didn't have a trigger command, did he? And now because we physically attacked it, the game's realized... Oh! We need to uh, update, update his attack pattern. So now he's uh, cast Protect on himself. And magic's going to be one of the best ways for us to... Uh, get at him. So, why am I trying to choke a bow feather? I don't want to do that. What I want to do is Luna Curtain Tidus here. Alright, now this enemy is using Desperado. Lots of damage uniformly across the team. Riku's low. We can leave her out, I guess. Alvid Potion again, because she's so quick. Uh, but I think Desperado as well, that has break on it. So if, any if anyone was petrified, they'd get shattered at that point and then they're screwed. So we'll do that. Auron's not going to get go because he's such a slow character. The delays aren't really going to do anything here. Let me just check. Does Kamari have a trigger command? No. Did Auron have one? Wacker doesn't have one, does he? No. Lulu? Uh, no, but she's got her overdrive up, but she's too slow, so I'm not going to bother. Has Actually, I will because obviously he's got protect on him, so whatever. Right, so... And we can speed her up with a Chocobo Feather in a second. So, let's throw out a Blizzara Fury. It wouldn't be impossible to have the Argus available right now as well, by the way. There we go. Lots of spin, seven. Kind of slow, but whatever. The Mortar Body there does reduce the effectiveness of some of these skills, but whatever. How low is the Mortar Body? Might be wise to try and kill it. All right, anyway, so look, we'll throw a Chocobo Feather. Actually, do you know what? I think it's going to be so fitting to have Kamari in this fight, doing some damage. Look how slow everyone is. I have to leave Riku out for now. Uh, I guess we'll just make her mug. She's not going to do much damage, but we'll get some items. Tetra Elementals. You can get either two of them or three. Here we go. So, break. And you'll see that in cases, Lulu. This is like another Earth magic. That um, oh, And here's Shattering Claw. That's really bad. Okay, good. If that had hit Lulu, that would have been it. She would have been ejected from the fight, but she didn't, so that's fine. Uh, that can be cured with a simple Albed Potion. And yeah, that's more Earth Magic, because Earth Magic doesn't have its own line in this Final Fantasy. Uh, you don't really see it so much. So there would be Quake, Break, perhaps some other ones. We're really struggling for speed here. I mean, if Lulu's never going to get another go, this is kind of irritating. Auron finally gets a go, and we can get him off the field. Bring Kamari in, get him to do some damage. I wonder if Kamari has his overdrive up as well. Shattering Claw on the wrong target again. Oh, Auron gets a trigger command. Oh man, this is where the L this is where LPing it makes it kinda hard to deal with stuff. Alright, fine, we'll do it. For you guys. Although he was not the man I once knew, Keenock was still my friend, Seymour. You will pay for his death! There you go, Auron's strength increases. Not that it matters because protects on the damn thing. God, okay. Lulu's there, she's not petrified anymore. Uh, can I please give her a turn? If I use a Chocobo Feather on her, uh, then it will at least give her a turn next time. Thing is, the Petrify is probably removing the haste, so if he does it on her again, 
Just petrify Auron. Oh no, not on Riku. That's really, really scary. There's more poison. Wrong shatter. Okay, finally, we can get Lulu off the field. Bring Kamari on. Actually, do you know what I want to do? Just for a second, we're going to bring Tidus on. And we're going to check his health. 10,000, so that's fine. Uh, now, okay, so Kamari. Uh, Black Magic. You, uh, you decided to stay and fight, dude. Enjoy. At least give him that one turn. Now, here's something very cool you can do. When this enemy gets to very low health, he's going to start casting a really powerful magic attack called Flare. And I really want to show that to you guys before we kick his ass with an overdrive. So there's Riku. Right. Ah, and she got turned straight away. That's fantastic. So, wait, wait, wait. What did I want to do with her? Ah. Uh... Uh, so let's swap her out. This could be kind of dangerous. Let's swap her out with Auron, who has higher strength now. And we will uh, mug the boss, okay? That should put him below 8,000 health. Yeah, easily. And now his attack pattern cha has changed to the final attack pattern, in which the mortar body keeps curing him, and instead of spamming Petrify, he spams Flare. Flare is crazy strong, as you can see there. Loads of damage, and it doesn't help that my slow characters are out right now. And Yuna went down. So, uh, we'll bring Riku back in, just because she's a quick player, and I can probably revive and get another go, as you can see there. That's nice. So, Chiku, we'll buy another turn. Um, what's really cool is you can cast Reflect on him, and with Reflect on him, every time the Mortar Body attempts to cure Seymour, instead it cures you. I want to demonstrate that to you guys, so we will try and stay out here. Flare is typeless elemental damage. It's one of the really late game things. Um, there you go, we give Yuna a turn too, so this is fantastic. This is exactly where we want to be, guys. Uh, we can, I guess, Marg again, try it. I'm not sure what you get from Mortar Body. You can't actually steal anything from Mortar Body. So here, look, we got this new ability called Reflect. Cast it on the enemy. It's, it's weird, Final Fantasy X is worthwhile reflecting on enemies just as much as it is on your own party. Because really, it's a defensive, mag defensive magic. Just as much as it is offensive. But look, by casting Reflect on him, watch the Mortar Body now. So look, he's going to flare. Kill Riku, but that's fine. I don't mind. Take some poison damage. Now the Mortar Body's going to try and cure him. It will get reflected and heal us. Amazing. And you will see that uh, Seymour is now, because that poison's just been doing a crazy number on him, uh, 5,000 health. Riku's dead, so she won't get experience from this fight, but I don't care. We are going to Grand Summon. Actually, we don't even need to go. Yeah, let's Grand Summon just work. We're going to Grand Summon Behemoth. We just got new Aeon, right? Let's see how it deals against Seymour. Now, if uh, you only get one turn with an Aeon against Seymour, um, if you uh, wait after that, he will use an ability called Banish. That just gets rid of... It's the only status that, that will actually impact an Aeon. It will never, he'll never do it on your actual players on your party. You can hack the game to make him do it, and it will just eject them like normal. But, uh, yeah. Or so the wiki says. How do you like a Mega Flare, Seymour? With only 2,000 health, I'm pretty sure we've got him here. There you go. Oh, we didn't quite break the 10k barrier. I was hoping to. If I'd spent all that time in Unisphere Grid getting all the extra strength spheres, we probably would have, but yeah. Well, I don't know, because Overdrive's saying... I don't know. And he's gone. Nothing to send. He's just disappeared. Riku's the only one who missed out on that experience party, but hey. Because she died. Four level 2 key spheres and a shell targe. Funnily enough, the item we were given just before the first Seymour fight... We escaped with our skins intact, but Yuna lost something. I could already tell her faith was shaken. Yevon had betrayed her. I felt like I should do or say something, anything. But nothing came. I was just as lost as she was. And then 